okay, so we are presented with a problem. That shaft is so long that it won't go up into the lathe. Now, I could take the uh, foot of the lathe off, okay, and get it in there that way. And even if we do that, we're still presented with a problem because I can't get but about 35 inches in order to lathe. So if I, if I did one end and then flipped it over and did the other end, you would still have um, a couple of feet in the middle, which is where the sprocket, where the center bearings need to ride, still would not be able to be lathed. Because that shaft is so long, it's going to have to be supported. So I can't just take the toe off unless I could build some type of a centering. If I could build something to center it, then I could let the excess end stick off down here and not use the foot of the lathe. And I don't own a, a center support. So I don't know. I have to think about this. Okay, so the other option is is to bore these out. But I still wouldn't be able to get the bearings in there and I, there's no way for me to bore the bearings out. Okay, so still got to figure it out. Okay, so if it don't fit, force it. <laughs> well, I realized that if I put a lot of, if I just push real hard, that rod's long enough that it flexes. Uh, which we're going to stabilize that by having four bearings on the uh, project But anyway, it'll flex enough. I don't have to take the foot off. I can slide it through there We're going to take a look at it and see if this will work or not Okay, so we got the shaft up in the lathe now that presents another problem it can actually completely bend over and completely tear and destroy stuff inside your shop and if you were you know if you were to get in it it, it kill you very easily is what I'm saying so we got to figure out how we're gonna stabilize the end of the shaft so we can get it spin it and then do a center put a center on the other end of the shaft so that we can get it up on into the foot of the lathe Don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got that done, we still need to stabilize it out of here somewhere. And I'll be honest with you, I may not be able to do this. I may stop this procedure completely if I think it's really going to be too unsafe. I could cut these in a half and make them into two four-footers and then create a coupler to put it together in the middle and then re-weld it back together once it's in the unit, in the project. But what I'm hoping is, to be honest with you, that I can spin this and just sand it real good and then everything will fit on there because it's so close. Okay, so it don't... <laughs> okay, folks, it's not as bad as it looks. It's a temporary solution and it was spinning before... Okay, it was working before I put the bell and wire on there. I put the bell and wire on there just to hold that piece of stainless steel from falling off the uh, jack stand, okay? And so if I hear a piece of steel hit the floor, but the first thing I'm gonna do is shut this thing down and I'm not gonna run around here for any reason. I don't care if it tears a hole through the wall 
if something bad was to happen. I'm not walking over this way, okay? So don't freak out. Okay, so y'all are able to notice that it's not straight, okay? But we're not worried about it being straight, okay? I'm building this ATV where it's got flexibility in it. It, it, don't, it doesn't matter. This thing's not going to be rotating at a thousand miles an hour. Okay? So, flexibility is good. So what it comes down to we're able to do 35 inches on either end by flipping the rod over but the part that's in the middle here there's no way to get to it uh, unless I try to grind it down here on the back side okay and even then uh, it's from it's uh, five foot from here to the wall that still would leave a foot I'd have to flip it again and then, so I'd be able to do a foot here and then flip it over and do a foot there and then we'd be at our eight foot. Hey folks, it's getting a little sketchy even for me. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut them in half. of you that are wondering I'm not actually using the lathe as a lathe to cut these down uh, these are just cold rolled one inch shafts um, and all I am doing is I'm using the lathe to spin them over to where I can take a rasp and a file and get all the rust and corrosion get the bark off of there where these bushings will fit up on their good okay two down two more to go Okay, so I don't know how well y'all can see, but we've got to create a quarter inch keyway. And in order to get the keyway straight, we're gonna use the lathe to scribe in the lines to outline for a quarter inch keyway. Okay, there's one, and then I'll just, uh, I'll rotate it around a quarter of an inch, and I'll put another groove, and then everything in the middle has to be cut out to a quarter inch depth. I do appreciate everybody tuning in, and we'll see y'all later.